Welcome to Truth Forum, a forum to discuss truth in the friendly surrounding like we do at home, at the kitchen table. I'm your host, Dr. Smith. We do have the rights to perform the songs, the notes, and the lyrics as licensed by BMI. I will lead compelling, relatable, and honest conversations. My guests will range from community leaders, professionals, and real people whose stories will touch and inspire you. Discussion will center around relationships and personal struggles and amazing, triumphant, and compelling topics in the news. If you'd like to be a guest on the kitchen table, you can call us at 269-282-1490. Email us at kingdombuildersworldwide2 at gmail.com. My vision is to catalyze, energize, and bring people together. I want to share some things that are extremely essential. If we're going to be successful, a lot of this has to do with business and business opportunities. If we were wise, we know that we go nowhere in ignorance of ourselves. There will be no network unless we know who we are so that we are in the network. And without network, there will be no power. Reawakening African people. And I intend to help us take our place in the world alongside all the others in the world because that is our rightful spot. So my job is to do what they do sometime in Africa. Every night they meet as a family to tell their story so they will remember where they came from, the tribulation that they had, and then what it is they must do. Storytelling time is the obligation of leadership. In order to make these connections, we must base them on our story. Yes, they put us in the box. Draw a curtain back in 1492. But I think it's important for us to connect with what's happening right now in 2019 with our current condition, what is happening now, then, so we can solve our problem. Before I introduce my only guest, my wife, today, I'm grateful for my producer, Tiffany Smith, Ronnie Hoy, Carl English, Mike Campbell, my son on Facebook Live, Chanel McKinley on camera, and Yvonne Armstrong, and my co-host, Doug Jones. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Right. Deacon Jones, how you doing today? I'm doing good, Pastor. Uh, Pastor, how you doing? Good. Good. Lady Smith, how are you? I'm doing just fine. How are you? I'm well. I'm all well. right, all right. I'm well. This is, um, many of you all are, are probably wondering what our subject is going to be about. And this has probably been, what, uh, four weeks. And my wife has, my wife and I have been in, in, in personal conversation on how should we address something. Should we address it? Should we just let it go? Uh, and many people uh, have probably given me the advice to just kind of let it go and move on. And, and I understand reason why uh, to some let it go, let it dissipate, disappear. But as a leader, Deacon Jones, I feel that there's still an obligation that I have. Absolutely. Uh, I have an obligation not just to my congregation, but I have an obligation to those people in Battle Creek that followed me, that, that uh, when I picked up the call, they came. And, and just because they didn't attend the church, I felt that I have an obligation. When, when words get out and if you don't dress some things, I just personally think it needs to be addressed. We're not here today to uh, slander anyone. We will not even tolerate any type of personal attacks. We're just going to kind of share with you how do you address a crisis. What's, so I want to give you a blueprint today. I'm going to give you a blueprint on how do you address a crisis. Because if we just keep living, all of us are going to go through a crisis. And I think the first thing I want to share with you, Deacon, and to my wife is that, you know, God doesn't create crisis. Mm -hmm. Crisis is something that 
that man created. So um, I just want to kind of talk about some things. My wife is here today. She is one of my uh, probably only true supporters that said I should talk about it. I think everybody has probably told me never say anything and because the way they have perceived my personality. Mm -hmm. uh, what a lot of folks don't understand is in this situation, I lost a dear friend, a, a close friend, you know, so, so this thing is very sensitive. But I want to leave you the words of Nelson Mandela. And then in the end of this show, Deacon Jones is going to read a statement that was drafted up by our attorney, and he's going to read it, and then once he reads it, that will conclude. So this show is going to be a little unique. Um, we're probably not going to be uh, asking for comments unless you want to give me love. If you don't want to give me any love, then you know we'll probably just dismiss those things. But hopefully, uh, but Nelson Mandela said, and I want to hear what you think about this, and even to the First Lady, I want to hear what you think about it. Nelson Mandela said, fools multiply when wise men are silent. When you hear that, Lady Smith, uh, first of all, how long have you been married to me? <laughs> It'll be 30 years in December. Yeah, I forgot. And, and we just we just celebrated our daughter's wedding, didn't we? Yes, we did. It was amazing. It was hey, beautiful. And y'all, through all this stuff that we were dealing with, I had to celebrate my daughter's wedding. And oh. all of you all that saw the video and you saw me slow dancing with her, and y'all gave me some love. Y'all was like, Bishop still got the moves. <laughs> digging, digging. You, you was there. You were there. I was there. there. And I was impressed. Were you impressed? I was impressed. <laughs> I, I didn't think you still had it. Digging, I, digging. I had it. I, you had it. You I, had I, it. I did the little, right. you saw yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. two step going. Uh, two, two, was it two step? Two step. I yeah. thought that was a three step. It was about two and a half. Two, okay, okay. Two okay. and a half step. <laughs> Yeah, so, he had the rhythm. He had thank the you. Rhythm. So, so, so we had a really good time in Indianapolis and, and, uh, <laughs> You know, our daughter, she was just so happy. And my brother, he uh, did the first part of the wedding, and I did the second part, the vows to my, my, my uh, we call him my son in love. Yes, your we, son in love. We don't say uh, son in law, <laughs> we say son in love. However, during all of that, there was still some, some turmoil taking place, and, and it had to be addressed. But at that time, you know, I just didn't want to get involved because I wanted to make sure my daughter. Uh, uh, had all of her father's attention, and and so hopefully this is a a show today that you can kind of retrieve. If you are a leader today, if you a father, if you a, 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 a boss, if you just a parent, how do you deal with a crisis? Hopefully today you'll learn something from me. In when the storms of life are raging, how you continue when you feel like giving up, when you feel like just covering your head and saying, I quit, how you deal with that? But before we go further, so Deacon and, and Lady Smith, when you hear Nelson Mandela, a great man that has done great things, uh, served 30 what, years, something in prison, mm -hmm. uh, he said, fools multiply when wise men are silent. H how do y'all take that? Well, um, I think part of that is saying, you know, people are always going to, uh, when something happens and, and, and somebody goes out and they, and they make a comment or they say something, and then once it goes through four or five people, the story changes. You know, next thing you know, you have a bunch of rumors and things out there. And if an accusation goes against an individual, sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's wise, a wise man will be silent because you can't really chase the lies. But at some point, they have to be addressed. So you just kind of, I think what he's saying is, you know, just sit back and watch fools multiply. Pretty okay. much what he's saying. Lady Smith, what you think about that? When fools multiply, when wise men are silenced. Nelson Mandela. I think that um, when you consider the word fools, is people who speak foolishness. So if wise men are quiet, then the foolishness will keep going. So a wise man need to come in and say, hey, you know, tell the truth about the matter and kind of shut the foolishness down. So, so a lot of these things is going to kind of give, this is what I'm trying to share with you all. And again, this is not just really about 
me personally, my wife, Deacon Jones, it's about how do you handle a crisis? How do you deal with struggles and trouble? How? Because there's no real manual, and then uh, you don't know what to do. And the first thing my wife said to me was, so, so, so how do we deal with this? What, what do we do with this? Uh, what did we learn from this? And so these are the things that, obviously, I had to deal with God and get some revelation. Uh, here's another statement from Booker T. Washington, uh, Deacon, and to my wife. It says, a lie doesn't become truth Wrong doesn't become right, and evil doesn't become good just because it's accepted by the majority. That was Booker T. Washington. How you elaborate on that? What do you think about that? Um, you, you can't chase the things that people say. You can't uh, uh, give in to what you always hear. And sometimes those things will die down. Um, man, I think that's pretty much what he's saying. And you, what about you? Yeah, the majority, just because the majority may agree or say doesn't mean that it's right. Okay. right. So the truth needs to be told. So with that being said, um, these are some of the foundations I want to share with you all. Because we are a small community. And the reality is... People get hurt, not just individuals. Tons of people, little innocent bystanders. You think about drive-bys and, and they're shooting, 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 and an innocent child gets shot down and die. That's what happens in a small community like this. When there's someone that you look up to and, and, and he or she uh, becomes their hero, and then boom, something happens, they're wounded. And um, it's important that we learn this from you. If, if you're listening to me, if you're watching, again, this is a lesson that deals with how we address crisis. Before you speak, let your word pass through three gates. These are three gates. This is something that I had to deal with for these last four weeks. Three gates. True? Is it necessary? And is it kind? Anytime you deal with words that come off your mouth, if you're going to make anything and you're going to say anything about anybody, make sure, first of all, it is true, it is necessary, and it is kind. Why is it, Deacon or Lady Smith, that sometimes it's not necessary or it's not true and it's definitely not kind? Is that just the human nature? What is it about that? Not that it's just the nature of people. Um, sometimes people need something to talk about. Um, sometimes, you know, maybe something in their life is not fulfilled. So they have to have something to talk about. They have to, you know, somehow give their, their, their what they're saying uh, some legs or some, some life. Because either there's a void in their life or just people in general just like to talk. You know, especially when you, when you know a lot of people and you hear something that's uh, so so-called juicy conversation. Um, I think it's just the nature of people to share it with your friends. Yeah, that's just what people do. Yeah. And sometimes they don't necessarily mean any harm. It's just talk. And and when when they do things like that, um, once it passes by four or five people, the story changes four or five times. Yeah, yeah. The next thing you know, it's, it's ten times worse than what it was when it started. Yeah, yeah. So 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 so, um, Lady Smith, we're going to. Uh, talk about a few things, but before we do that, tell us to tell the community who you are uh, and, and what you do, and one of your passions that you involved in with the children, and some of the roles that you plan at the church at Kingdom Builders. For those who don't know, you're not always one up front, and and even share that with the audience. Is that that's something more your personality, or that's something that. That's the way I told you you better be. You better be <laughs> quiet, and you better sit behind me. Share with the audience who Lady Smith really is. Okay. What I do professionally is I'm a lead teacher for Head Start. So, um, and I have a bachelor's degree in early childhood education. Um, at the church, I 
um, I'm leader of the YES program, which is the Youth Enlightenment Service, where we have children's church during church service. So I take the children back and I teach them different lessons and hopefully they can apply it to their lives. My role as First Lady, to me, is I'm more the behind the scenes type person. You're not really going to see me like up preaching a sermon. I'm more of a support for my husband here and I'm available to do whatever he needs me to do, but I'm not an out front type of person. I'll teach a Bible class, you know, or I'll talk to people behind the scenes, but I'm more of a help. That's kind of what I do. Now, is that is that something that that you were told to do, or that's just who your makeup is. Those that who know, is. those who know Nicole Angelique used to be Thomas. Was it Thomas? Yes, it was Thomas. It was so I know long. it was a long time ago, but it was name. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, my head. see, I, uh, I, I, I said strip the name, but I told Brown to keep her name. Ain't that something? That's called it's double, a double standard. Is that yeah. called a double, uh, a double standard? standard. What? Uh, yeah, well, she's double perfect. standard. Well, not really. Thank you. I keep talking, Deacon. That's don't why you're a Deacon, man. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's why you're thinking. <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyway, so, so, and those who know my wife, you know, my wife, you know, those who know her, she's always been this person all her life. And uh, I'm, I am eternally grateful for that, that spirit and, and that support. Uh, Deacon, how, how long you been knowing us, man? Oh, my goodness. Um, how old are we? We don't have to go there, but, okay. but yeah, yeah, yeah. I was born. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 40... Yeah. 30, 40 years, yeah, yeah, 40, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know what the number is, right. but a long time yeah. before gray. Yeah, yeah. Before <laughs> gray. Before gray. Absolutely. And wait. Before and wait. gray wait. Yeah, yes. yeah. So, you know, that's important. What, what are we doing today? We're trying to, so you can take this, this show today. We did have a guest that was also going to come on. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. she's involved with a family reunion and had some other obligations so she couldn't make it. And she was going to help kind of bring in some maybe psychological uh, analysis and questions about some things. But here's another thought um, I, I wanted to share with you all. You will continue to suffer if you have an emotional reaction to everything that is said to you. And I want to say that to you all because for a minute, I, that was me. I, 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 was literally, uh, I was literally at home for probably about about a week or two weeks just doing absolutely nothing. It wasn't that I, I just couldn't, I couldn't do anything. And I guess I'm sharing these, I'm being transparent because if you keep living, you're going to have a day. Right. If you're in any leadership position, you're going to have that day. And hopefully you can glean from what I'm sharing with you today. Think about it. It says, you will continue to suffer if you have an emotional reaction to everything that is said. And the only reason why I have reaction is because I'm on Facebook, I'm listening to people. And so the first thing is we can't do that. But what is it? Why is it that we still want to hear things even though it's going to be bad? Why do we do those things? I think it's just entertainment for some people. Um, no, but if you're the subject. If I'm the subject. If you're the subject, yeah, yeah. Why Why you want to steal it? So what they're saying about me? Why I want to hear that when I know it's going to be hurtful? Well, I mean, you know, it, I think most people would want to know if something is going to be said that's really damaging to the character or, uh, you know, to their person or to someone in their family. Um, I, I think it's just our nature to want to know what people are saying. Um, you can always say to yourself, you know, I don't care what people think, but quite honestly, we do. Yeah, um, yeah everybody absolutely. does. Absolutely. You know? um, I, I've heard several people, and I've even said it myself. Nah, I'm not worried about what other people think about me, but you are. Yeah. And we do. Yeah. Because yeah. it does make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. makes a difference in your in, in your family. Yeah. It makes a difference in your profession. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it makes yeah. a difference in life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't want to go somewhere and people are saying things about you that aren't true. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. You want any comment? And on there's it? when you are in a public light, there is a certain standard that you need to live by. So when that's tarnished, or people talking, you'll want to know, so then you can correct it. Yeah. Because we don't want to people to continue to believe something that's not true. Yeah. Um, it's not being defensive. It's just saying what true is. Because you know you you got children involved community involved, you're in the light of people, so you want to portray an image that is pleasing to God, and that's very important that we do that, and kind of shut down things that's not, not I don't want to say shut down, but kind of like lessen 
um, what's not true, so then the light can come in and we can see truth. Yeah, I, I, a lot of the older people who, and, and I thank God for them, I want everybody to know that when, when part of this, this situation occurred, uh, my first person I, I went to was to Bishop Hess. Uh, I, I call him Bishop Hess. Uh, he's Pastor Hess, uh, but, but his, his level of spirituality, I have great respect for him. We don't hang out every day. Uh, uh, we don't even talk every day, but we have a, I have a, a, a there's a mutual respect for each other, but I, I reached out to him, and, and he was one that told me, first of all, he said, son, I, I just need you to be quiet. I just need you to be silent. And, and I literally subjected myself to that. And I, I think it's important, again, I'm trying to give you a blueprint on how you handle crisis. I'm trying to give you a blueprint because, again, and I'll keep saying this throughout the show, if you keep living long enough, you're going to go through something because crisis is sometimes designed to make you better or to allow you to remove things that you need to have out your life. And so Bishop Hess, uh, he was one that told me, step back. And so I've subjected myself up on him. I was even advised to, well, right now, let's not do no speaking. Let's let's let someone else speak, and that's when I brought in my uncle Ricky, uh, Pastor Perry. Uh, he's my biological uncle. He's not just somebody that you make up. He's my mother's uh, younger brother, and he at one time lived with us, so he's like a brother to me. But he's also a biological uncle, and he done a fantastic job. I mean, yeah. Let's talk about that. How 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 Pastor Perry has taken over the leadership at Kingdom Builders and things of that nature. I think it was great with Pastor Perry's experience. In his spirituality, um, he stepped up. He, he, he's done a great job, you know, preaching. He's done a great job in Bible study. And, uh, you know, he's just a great man of God. So I think that was really the right uh, person to step in, yeah. uh, you know, during this time of need. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of respect for Pastor Perry. He's been uh, uh, pastoring for a while. And I believe his church is Freedom. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Freedom Church. And uh, uh, just a wise man. Just yeah. a wise man. Just, just absolutely. Uh, did a great job and nothing but respect for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything about your, about your uncle? <laughs> I think that uh, Uncle Ricky brought um, a confidence and a comfort in just being there and the word that he gave and just the, the, the presence of family itself was most important and having that support system was just amazing. So that's another lesson. So if you're going through a crisis, you, you definitely need to connect with family, but just remember, just because they're blood doesn't mean that's the one you connect with. You got to right. connect with that person because unfortunately you can have your blood that's not always the right person for you. So in that case, I was blessed. Then there's another part of this point I want to bring out. Then they go on and say, true power is sitting back and observing things with logic. So that's where the wisdom come in at. These older men and older women they, they can see things down the road, and they've been down the road. Now, I obviously should be one of those people of wisdom so I can encourage those younger than me. But there come a time where I may have to glean to that 70-year-old, and that's exactly what I did. Then it goes on to say, if your words control you, that means everyone. No, if words, that's the key. If words control you, that means everyone else can control you. Mm -hmm. And that's been the problem. Mm -hmm. And so I want to encourage all of you that may, go in, may be going through a crisis, may have had accusations. If you continue to hear their words, then those words will control you and you will never do what you're called to do. And so uh, those are some points I want to bring out. There's a final point I want to bring out where I kind of hit to the meat because I know many of you all that's watching, and I'm, be, I'm being very, very wise or trying to be wise with this dialogue because many are just listening and, and, and paying attention to what is going on, what's been said, what is he talking about, and then some know everything. Oh, my God, what is he talking about? Yeah, right, what you going to say? So here, here's one key point, Diggin, and to my wife. It, you will never correct what you are unwilling to confront. I believe, absolutely. You will never correct what you are unwilling to confront. I've been a community leader since I moved here. I've been speaking on behalf of the black community. Unapologetic. 
I've given my finances. So when my name comes up, I got to respond. Mm -hmm. But I'm also laying back watching the way you respond. Because the way you respond tells me a lot about you. And the way I respond tells you a lot about me. And so with that being said, and you will never silence the voice of Goliath. Anybody that knows the Bible verse, you will never silence Goliath unless you take his head. And that's why we're talking today. Mm -hmm. I got to deal with the head and kill this so I can move on. Because if I don't kill it, then unwise people are going to keep speaking. And I don't, it was, it, was my, it was Pastor Perry that said, you don't want to be in a relationship with somebody that don't want to be with you. Yep. You know what he said? Yep. He said, let him go. Absolutely. Let him go. Absolutely. Don't want to be in a, a, a don't want to be in a community if the community don't want you. Mm -hmm. My wife and I, we've been in ministry for how long? What, basically, thirty years, right? Thirty years. Is this our first rodeo? This is not our first rodeo. We've been through some hell and back. Yes, we have. <laughs> in all areas, I mean, the sickness, yes. the church, drama. Why is that? What, is it is something wrong? Was what, what? What am I doing wrong? <laughs> You're not doing anything wrong. I don't say that. Don't say that. You're not doing anything no, wrong. No, no, don't say that. Don't. <laughs> no, but, because... But I, I appreciate that, but don't say that. But go ahead. Go ahead. Ah. Go ahead. Go ahead. When you have someone, and that's this is for anybody, if you are trying to do right, there's always going to be bad that's going to come along. If you know the scripture, you know, Satan is roaring around, seeking who he may devour. He's like that roaring lion. If you are doing good, he's going to come at you. If you keep doing bad... He has no reason to mess with you because you're already in his territory. Yeah. But anybody who is trying to do good, you can expect some obstacles to come your way, no matter what it is. So, you know, if you're doing good out there in the community, you can expect some kind of obstacle. But the important thing is how we handle it. Mm -hmm. Because you taught a lesson before about testing trials, trials mm -hmm. and tribulations mm -hmm. when they come. We say, oh, I'm going through this. Oh, I'm going through this. Oh, this is going on. But it's how you handle it that makes it a test. Or it's how you handle it that makes it a, a trial. Or it can be your testimony, yeah. how mm -hmm. you come over it. Mm -hmm. So right now, this is going to be our testimony because we're moving past it and we are, you know, going on to do what God has called you to do here in the city. Mm -hmm. And nothing's going to stop it. I don't care because I know, I know the devil's tactics. I know what he's trying to do. But you know what? We're going to win. Mm -hmm. you, you know what, Bishop? Not one person on this earth is perfect. Mm -hmm. And when you're younger, you know, you make some mistakes and you have some trials and some things that mm -hmm. you, you have to go through. Mm -hmm. Not every experience in, experience in life can be taught. Mm -hmm. You have to go through it mm -hmm. sometimes to learn. Mm -hmm. And as you grow and as you get better, hopefully you don't make those same mistakes uh -huh. again. And then, you know, sometimes people don't want to let your past go. Mm -hmm. They want to bring your past up mm -hmm. into the future. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but as you grow, as you get older, and as you get wiser... You do things differently, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and you know people are going to be people. They're going to judge no matter what. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is, not one person mm -hmm. living mm -hmm. to this day has not gone through mm -hmm. some type of trial in their life mm -hmm. that was life changing. Mm -hmm. So nobody's perfect. And mm -hmm. that's one thing too. You know, the tactic of the devil is to bring up a person's past to make the uh, pr present accusation mm -hmm. believable. Right. You know, nobody wants the stuff being brought up in their past. Once it's done, it's covered, it's done, we moved on. Right. Nobody wants the stuff being brought back. Especially if you see the fruits of what they're doing. Absolutely. First you know? change, you can tell by their fruits. Absolutely. So, so, so let's talk about this for a minute. Again, th this is a, 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 a show that can discuss failures, past failures, reconciliation. It's a, so keep me... Keep my time frame, Tiffany. Uh, uh, reconciliation. Uh, it's a show that can talk about how you deal with your situation. Because I promise you, Deacon, we're going to get some phone calls when somebody go through something. Absolutely. They can say, Bishop, I remember the show you and Deacon and your wife did, and it helped me. That's really why we're being transparent today. But um, I wrote a book called Naked Before God. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And in that book, there were uh, so, uh, some infractions that did occur, but in that situation, we share the entire story. We didn't mention names. I think names are so unfair. 
because we're still a small community. And in that situation, we had we, a, a child was conceived. And that child has graduated from where Eric graduated from? Uh, uh, Pat Robertson, Pat Eric Robertson, Robert. yeah. or uh, not or Roberts, but uh, uh, Pat Robertson, Liberty University, not Liberty, that, that, anyway, down there in Virginia, uh, doing excellent, has a great, beautiful fiance, uh, and he was right there around Tino, he was right there around Brianna, uh, my wife accepted what happened, and we built a family together. Because family should never suffer because of a mistake that somebody's made. The problem is when you get older and something sounds like and you bring that back up, mm -hmm. that's what's unfair. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's what's unfair. And the best thing you can do is when you say, well, go read his book. Well, at least buy it and that'll give me some more money. <laughs> right. See, if, if, if you want to know just go at least buy the book go to amazon.com naked before god and while you at it get what they don't tell you about money what they don't tell children about money walking into your promise and then the Bar barack obama buy all those books it will help me out because i you know right now Dickie, we we probably we probably need some gas money <laughs> <laughs> so 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 but 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 we, we are a small community. Mm -hmm. What is it about wanting to hurt people? See, that's what I, I'm, this ministry is not about hurting people. I would never want to hurt anybody, and I never want to step on somebody when they're down. So now let's bring up the spiritual part. Kingdom builders went to the unchurch. When I came back in this town, I didn't want to go to Maranatha and take Maranathaites. I didn't want to go to Bethlehem Temple. I didn't want to go to Emmanuel Covenant. I didn't want to go to Second Baptist. I didn't want to go to Macedonia. I'm just trying to name some churches now. Mm -hmm. I went to the unchurched, people that was not going to church. So what happened is after a year of pastoring, they're still unchurched. And they don't have all the biblical structure of how you handle a church problem. So when a problem occur, we're going to naturally do what you do in the world. So for those that's watching and listening, let me give you a biblical scripture, what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. And I don't know, Tiffany, if you guys know how to put it up on your screen and pop it. If not, I, I apologize. I should have gave it to you earlier. But it'll be Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, G-A-L-A-T-I-A-N-S. So if you can't do it, don't worry about it. But this is what it says. It says, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one. Now watch this. How do you suppose to restore people in the spirit of meekness? Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So if there is a fall that ever happened, and in this case that we're about to share, there was no fall involved, only allegations. But for those that wanted to get on the line of teaching people and rebuking people and training people, let me tell you what the Bible says. If a person fall in the church, the Bible says you get people who are spiritual, and the whole goal is that you want to restore them. The goal is never to kill people, right. to crush people, to break their will, restore people back in the spirit of meekness. What else? I'm too loud. Oh, Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. G A L A T I A N S. Make sure you restore them in meekness. So when you think about meekness, Deacon, what you thinking of? You one of the deacons in the church. You have to help restore people. When you think of meekness, what you think of? Um, you have to be, um, um, just like the definition of meek, be very understanding yeah. and compassionate. Yeah. You know, and, and think about that person. Yeah. You know, and then think he about said, their feelings. Yes. And then he said, and consider thyself lest you be tempted. What you think that means, Lady Smith? Because you could fall into the same thing or something else. Nobody's perfect. Life goes on, but you know. 
anybody so, could fall into any kind of temptation at mm -hmm. all. So how many people have came to me with their problems? The reason why I was able to understand you, because the Bible told me I had to have that spirit of meekness. Lest I be tempted. So I, I say that to say this. For those who have no idea what I'm talking about, stay on the show. The letter is going to explain it. But for those who with me, follow with me, please. Stay on the show. And, and of course, we're afraid to look on the phone, but if you got some, some, some love that you're praying for me, some love, throw some love out there. Throw some, I don't know if you don't want your name to be associated, but show me some love hearts or, or, or prayer hearts or whatever, because that at least tells me we're engaged in this conversation. So let me explain what happened. I did receive a phone call. I will not mention the name. I won't mention the gender. I will only mention pastor. Okay? So the pastor would know exactly who that person is. I would not use any pronouns because I do not want anyone to get an idea if it's male or female. But the person sent me a lengthy text. I first thought it was a true concern because the original text was, how can I help? My response was, thank you, with hearts. Then the person came back and blasted me. I mean, wore me out. So now, I now have to address ministerial people, people who we've never fellowship with, folks that have never came by the church, shook our hands. we never given out, you know, we never done anything together, but now this person is ready to throw out a tap. They, these are things that we cannot do in a small community. But since this person is in that position, let me tell you what the Bible says. So Tiffany, if you can put 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 19. If we're going to do it, let's do it the right way. This is what the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 19. Do not entertain an accusation against an elder unless it is brought by two or three witnesses. Deacon, what you say about that? Uh, I think that says it all. You know, I think that once you're in a position of leadership, pastors, you know, in the, in the community or, you know, wherever, um, you can't give in to the hype. You can't give in to what, to what, you, what you hear without, proper, without following the proper steps first. Um, I mean, that's Bible. I'm okay so far. I'm doing okay. That's Bible. And uh, it's almost like being accused or being put on trial before the accusation is actually even <laughs> brought out. Yeah. Is it true or false? You've already been accused and, 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 and tried. Guilty until proven innocent. Yeah, huh? guilty until proven innocent. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I've heard people, this is what's amazing. I, I heard gangbangers say that to me. Now, gang bangers, <laughs> gang, drug dealers, slangers, y'all been, man, man, it's messed up out here. Man, you ain't, what is it, innocent? No, how, how does innocent until proven you're, guilty? You're guilty until mm -hmm. proven innocent. Yeah, you're guilty until proven innocent. Well, then I feel the same way. I mean, what's <laughs> what, what makes me the difference? Look, because I'm a preacher, I can't get the same love. Why I can't get the same love? Why can't we all stand before court and say you're innocent? until you're proven guilty. The Bible tells you clearly, so every preacher knows better. If you are a pastor and you have discussed this matter to your congregation and you have yet to talk to me, you have contradicted scripture. One of my conscious folks told me to stop talking about it, so I'm gonna be quiet. <laughs> I, I, I got these people that's trying to keep me on, on, on a straight and narrow. Pray for me. <laughs> Pray for him, Deacon. So, Tiffany, I'm doing okay? All right, all right. Yvonne, I'm okay? All right, so far, all right. Okay, so let me share. Ronnie, I'm okay back there? Okay, now listen, y'all. I want to share a few things. Um, real quickly, there are two animals. Remember, this is a Bible class. Like a, uh, My first Bible class I've taught on a dog show. 
but it's, it's to kind of talk about the format. Every preacher can take this information. Every leader, every coach, every, everybody that's in the position of power, you can learn this. There are two animals that the creator identified himself with. Do anybody have an idea what those two animals are? Just in case people follow me. Do anybody have an idea what you think the two animals are that God identified himself with? If there's anybody want to try to take a guess, uh, you know, I don't know. I may, I like to give away gifts and blessings, and my family get mad at that, but that lets me know you're listening. But let me go ahead and give you the answer. Ego and a lion. Ego and a lion. Those are two animals that God identified with. So I, in, in seminary, and for the last 40 years, I've studied the two animals. Since God is the leader of this universe, of this world, you know, I want to find out the nature of these two animals. And if you notice, the lion is the king of the jungle, and the eagle is the king of the a bird kingdom. And that's very, very, very important. So, Deacon, you had experiences in your own personal life. You've witnessed people in personal lives. Um, people who are insecure and they meet somebody that is confident, they always call that confidence arrogant. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Think about it. It's, it's amazing that People would look at my wife and say, well, she's meek and mild and low. Her husband is arrogant when it's really just personalities. Mm -hmm. they, they may say you humble, but then to someone else, they may say you arrogant. But the reality is I want everybody in this room, all of you that's listening to me, when you discover who you are, you can't help but become confident. Amen. 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 And, and that's what I'm trying to do in this community. I'm trying to get everybody to learn who they are. And the big picture is community. Listen, before Bishop Smith move away, because he, he can't take the fact that nobody's liking me no more, my feelings hurt. Let's look at it spiritually. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. If you believe that God sent me here to be a blessing to this community, then why allow the evil demons? And when I say demons, I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about the spirit of darkness. Right. Mm -hmm. See, we, we that spiritual understand that it's a spiritual attack. Right. It's not a natural attack. So this is not about people. It's about trying to shut the mouth of a leader. Because for the, look, look, uh, uh, oh, uh, oh, oh, watch. Let me give you an example. I received a phone call. Right when I was going through this drama, the news people called me up and said, Bishop, what's your thought about the sidewalk? You know, the, mm -hmm. the street thing. Mm -hmm. By St. Phil? By St. Phil. Mm -hmm. Well, because I was going through everything, I ain't said a word. <laughs> <laughs> I said, y'all ain't going to set me up. And that's unusual. And that's unusual. <laughs> right. But that's what happens to people. Is that what y'all want? Do you want to allow our community, because we don't want to deal with what really happened, to shut my mouth because then I can't speak up? I didn't say a word. Now, that really, I care less about that. Be honest about it. I'm not into judging communities. I'm not into that. You know, all I want to know is, well, can I, can I name a street after Tino? <laughs> <laughs> or a red, black, and green. Can, right. we, can, I get a, hey, can I get a red, black, and green street there? Let's do it that way. I don't care none about what you did over here. Just give me permission. But guess what, y'all? I couldn't even talk about it because my community had me in hostage. And that's the thing that we don't want to see happen. Mm -hmm. I've seen it with Jesse Jackson. I've seen it with a lot of leaders. You notice they get quiet on subjects. Mm -hmm. Either they're controlled by the government, mm -hmm. they got certain monies coming in, mm -hmm. or they have some, some things in their closet. Mm -hmm. They call it blackmail. And what they do is they silence people. I cannot live like that. If I have to be silent, then it's time for me to go into the grave six feet deep and just say goodbye. So uh, with that being said, when you discover who you are, y'all, you know, so... Lady Smith, um, 
I got 10, 15 minutes. Lady Smith. So, so as a wife, when, when, when you see these things happen, um, what is the message of hope you like to give to people? Because the goal is we're not trying to hurt anybody. And, and you saw where I was, I was saddened because a, a great friend was involved. And, 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 and he, he, this, this friend of mine is, we were standing. My wife and I was planning, we were going to be re renewing our vows. And he was one of the, the, the trios, his trio, trios at the church, you know. I, uh, I, 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 I give a name over a facility. You know, that's just not, you're not going to just do dumb stuff like that when you love somebody that much. Mm -hmm. And then when you lose that relationship, it saddens your heart. How, what was your role in that? Because you saw me when no one else saw me in a condition that was probably abnormal to you. Um, with you being the type of person who really genuinely cares about people, um, it bothers you that people would think a certain thing um, that's not true. You, um, you build your life around your character. You build your life around trying to help people to be the best that they could be. From elementary school, children on up, whoever you come in contact with, that's your goal, is to try to get them to achieve whatever goal that they have. So that's important to you. So, I mean, you've held all type of events at the church, didn't, uh, funerals, you've done all these type of things. You have spoke on people's behalf, and that image is important. Because first of all, you have to answer to God for anything anyway. And you are working to to please God and to help a community to be who God requires for them to be. So this situation, it threw you off. And it was hard for you to function because you, because you are who you are in the community. And because it was just like, it was just a blow. It was just like unexpected, what is going on here? I got this going on, I'm getting ready to be ordained, I'm ready to have all these other events, and then it kind of just stopped everything for now until we get past mm -hmm. it. Yeah, because as you know, we were scared. It was like the devil, it was like the devil, the devil knew exactly what Kingdom Builder was about to do. Right. We were doing too much. Mm -hmm. Doing a lot. And doing the devil said, how can I, how, how can I do this thing? Yeah. We're about to ordain leaders, we're about to appoint leaders. Devil didn't like it, and boom, crash. Mm -hmm. right. Well, um, just continue to show your love. If, if, if you're still at least working with us, filling us, you know, uh, because, again, Deacon Jones will be re re reading a, a legal letter document uh, drafted by our attorney, and then we'll be done with this, and we'll keep on moving if that's what we need to do. Uh, yes, I know people ask, of course, if God called you, then, then you do what God has called you to do. But I also still believe that people play a role in that. If mm -hmm. the people don't want me, God can still call you, Deacon. Exactly. And you can run Kingdom Builders. Pastor Perry can run Kingdom Builders. I don't want to work too hard if I got to keep trying to defend something. Mm -hmm. I'm too old for that. So let me break this down for everybody here. Your attitude got to be right. Then your attributes, then your altitude. So when you go through a trial, when people talk about you, again, take this information and apply it to your personal life. Remember the word attitude, remember the word attributes, and remember the word altitude. Change the level of association. It's important that if you're going to develop you got to change your level of association. When you change your aptitude, okay, you normally want to change your attitude. The higher you go, your attitude must change. So I want to say to all of you in Battle Creek, leaders choose their friends. As a leader, I have to choose my friends based on my destination. 
And, and would you agree with that, Deacon? If we're trying to go to another level, you got to hang with people that's trying to go where you're trying to go. Exactly. And that's what we have to get to a place when we develop and grow. No one is responsible for your life except you. That's why we're here talking today. I'm talking, my wife is here with me, my deacon is with me. Just like we talk about that ego, an uh, ego, I taught my son and my daughter this all throughout their baby stage of life. A ego can fly to three to four miles in the sky. And when eagles are flying at top flight, I call it top flight. If an eagle meets another bird in top flight, guess what? It's another eagle. Mm -hmm. Because no other bird can get that high. And see, that's where we're trying to take Battle Creek. Battle Creek, I'm trying to take it to a level we've never been to. And it was getting lonely at the top because we had to change our mindsets to get up here. We are so used to just getting a few things. The city give you a nickel or a dime here. Y'all have a little gathering. But guess what? Our lives never change. And that's the passion of Kingdom Builders. And if that drive is gone, then we go elsewhere. The Bible talked about how you wipe the dust off your feet and you move on to another level. Eagles meet only eagles. And that's important we learn that. Mm -hmm. And that's what Kingdom Builders is. And, and Deacon, since you've been with me, have you seen yourself mentally change? Absolutely. Absolutely. My whole mentality's changed, you know. Um, when you came back, um, I wasn't going to church. You know, I mean, I still consider myself, you know, uh, saved and a Christian, um, but I, I didn't have a church home. You know, when you came back and you shared your vision, um, I felt that. Yeah. You know, I, I felt your spirit and I felt your sincerity, and that's why I'm here now. I want to say this to all of you that's listening to me. If you keep running into pigeons and ducks, you're flying too low. If you keep running into pigeons and ducks, mm -hmm. you're flying too low. Eagles never flocks. You'll find them one at a time. And that's what I already taught my children. Mm -hmm. Eagles never flock. You find them one at a time. So if you keep attracting a gang of people around you, whether it's at work, whether it's in the community, and everybody wants to bring gossip to you. Listen to me now. Everybody want to bring gossip to you. Everybody want to bring gossip to you. Then you are in bad company. Mm -hmm. In other words, why are you going down there? Who are you there with? Who, who, who at that place? They ain't teaching you nothing. That's chicken talk. And guess what, y'all? Chickens only fly when they frighten. <laughs> Chickens only fly when they frighten. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be a leader, I want you to be careful with who you fly with. We got five minutes. We're going to go ahead and read that statement. I want to say this as I close. People who criticize, they got time for it. Okay? They got time for it. That's why I have to ignore them. And I ignore my critics because they got time for it. I'm too busy, I'm too busy succeeding, and I'm gonna continue to do things to make people criticize, but I need supporters at Kingdom Builders, I need the city of Battle Creek to support, I need to know where we are, because we got too much work to be done, and if we don't get the work done, then we'll be in the same boat as my brother preached today at Emmanuel Covenant, he talked about that what? That line. He talked about that level. He says, time for us to get back on course. And today, we're back on course, and I'm going to have Deacon read this letter to you from our lawyer, and then we're going to dismiss in prayer. I want to thank you all for tuning in to this broadcast. Next week, we'll be back, but I had to share this with you all, and may God bless you all. Deacon. Okay, the letter I'm about to read was written up by legal counsel. To whom it may concern, a recent incident occurred at Kingdom Builders Worldwide that affected the members of Kingdom Builders Worldwide, the first family, and the reputation of Bishop Smith. False allegations of indecency were alleged against senior pastor Bishop Tino Smith Sr. 
The character, reputation, and trustworthiness of our bishop is a major concern. Accordingly, we take all false allegations of this nature seriously. We recognize the gravity of slander and libel. Therefore, the false allegation was treated very seriously at every stage of the investigation. When the false allegations was received, we contacted church officials, staff, and legal counsel to inform them of the allegations. We aim to be as transparent as possible while ensuring the integrity of the investigative process. While the investigation was ongoing, Bishop Smith was silenced and prohibited from addressing the congregation until the investigation was completed. Consequently, Pastor Ricky Perry assumed the responsibilities and duties of the senior pastor. The false allegations against Bishop Smith was investigated thoroughly and received the priority it deserved. We support, with support from First Lady, Bishop Smith volunteered his time and subjected himself to a polygraph test. The results of the tests completely exonerated Bishop Smith of every allegation made against him. Our continued concern in includes any and all acts of slander and or libel asserted against Bishop Smith, any attempt to assassinate the character and or reputation of Bishop Smith will be prosecuted. We have zero tolerance for defamation and we will take all necessary ac accusations, actions that are within our purview. Thank you for coming in, tuning into our show. I always like to end the show by acknowledging my ancestors. Leo Dell Perry Sr., he, before he passed away, desired for all of his family members to be saved. My brother shared that today, a powerful message. He mentioned my name, he mentioned Pastor Francois' name, he mentioned Pastor Perry's name, and of course his name. We are part of a dynasty, a family. We come together. So thank you, Pastor, Pastor Perry, for your help. To our late Leo Del Perry Sr., we're going to do our best to make your prayer come to pass. To our grandmother, his wife, Ruby Elizabeth Perry, and my mom, who's with me right now, Mother Georgia Lee Howard Perry. On my father's side, I can just think about my dad right now, what he's saying to me. Don't worry about it, son. Keep on keeping on. That's my dad, boy. I miss him right now. But to his parents, Edward West Smith, where I got my name from, Gussie Smith, my grandmother, and, of course, my great dad, Hugh Daniel Smith Sr. Listen, y'all. Thank you, community. Thank you, Battle Creek. We don't have to always agree together to work together. Say goodbye. Give me some love. This, we're not fighting nobody. We're praying for all family members. And we hope we can all come together as a community. Because that's what time it is. Thank you for working with me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you, Kingdom Builders, for staying with me. Thank you for the staff for staying with me. Thank you for my staff today for having my back. This is our prayer. We're going to pray together. I got a gift from somebody. Uh, I forgot who it was. It was... Uh, it was Kia, Kia West. She one of the members of the church. She thought about the old bishop. She know I carry money. So it's like a, a, like a money purse bag. But it got Martin Luther King Jr. Thank you. As a matter of fact, I got a call from Charles. Charles Check told me. You that did call me to check on me, thank you. Appreciate it. Love you. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for this privilege. We thank you for this platform. We thank you for this opportunity to be able to talk Share your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Access Vision, your voice, your community.